Hi, I'm Celeste. And I'm Terry. And today we are just traveling, traveling through, through Glenwood, Glenwood Springs, Colorado. Colorado. So in this video we're going to go over what there is to see and do in Glenwood Springs for first time visitors. So we're on a 16 day trip through Colorado and Utah, seeing the Big Five in Utah, but also hitting some of our some of the spots in Colorado that we haven't seen before. Now you might be asking yourself why Glenwood Springs and we decided it was about halfway on the way to Moab, Utah. It's just south of the White River National Forest. It's still in the mountains and it's got a number of interesting things that we thought we might want to see. So the route to uh, Glenwood Springs is I-70 from Denver all the way. It's about 170 miles from Denver International Airport. But it, you're going to traverse some really beautiful country. The highway parallels the Colorado River almost the entire route, looping back and forth and going through some incredible canyons. Yeah, in addition, it was um, right in the middle between Denver and Moab, Utah, which was our next de destination. So it was under three hours to Moab, which made it an ideal location for our first stop. So one of the first reasons to visit Glenwood Springs is it's a very scenic, western, classical Colorado western town. Yeah, it's very small. It's uh, only 9,960 people current population, um, but it has a number of artifacts and great restaurants and it's easily, it's very easy to walk around the little city. There are a lot of restaurants to choose from. One that stands out for us was Rosie's Little Bavarian Restaurant, which was a little um, breakfast place. We went there for breakfast. We had banana pancakes and French toast. Yeah, the food was great. The service was even better, and they were very friendly. Now, one of the things that really stood out for us in the Gledwin Springs areas was the amount of stuff there is to do outdoors. There's whitewater rafting. There's a fantastic uh, set of hot springs, two different companies, in fact. There's hiking. There's a huge amusement park up on the hill above Glenwood Springs. There's tons of biking, whether you are a person that likes to road bike or mountain bike. There are rental, bike rental places in the area. And trails are everywhere. I mean, literally every hill in the area is covered in trails. And the really good news is some of the forests had been closed over the last couple of years due to really bad mudslides, and it looks like they're all starting to open up again. So one reason why we wanted to go through Colorado was because we'd never been there in the spring. We've always gone in the winter time to go skiing, and, and this was a great opportunity to see not only the Aspens, which are famous in Colorado in the spring, but also some of the, the flowers and, and, and to see the mountains in bloom, which we've never seen before. And we always stop to take pictures of flowers because Terry's father would have been very happy about us seeing flowers. Yeah, my dad was a huge photography enthusiast and he took pictures of flowers by the thousands. He never ceased to be fascinated by pictures of flowers. One of the things that we, we saw in Glenwood Springs was the Hotel Colorado, which was a pleasant surprise. We didn't know it was there before we went. It was constructed in 1891, and we found out that it was, the design was based on the Villa Medici and the Borghese Gardens in Rome, Italy, which we've actually visited before, which was quite a coincidence. Quite a coincidence, yeah, because we had actually gone in the, uh, in the Villa Medici. The uh, Hotel Colorado's had some really famous visitors over time, including Theodore Roosevelt, William Henry Taft, Herbert Hoover, and Tom Mix, the early Western cowboy actor who was there to film a movie. The hotel's glory days might be over, but it's still a beautiful building. In 1942, the hotel was leased to the U.S. Navy as uh, a hospital, and the U.S. Naval Convalescent Hospital was commissioned in 1943 and served over 6,500 patients by the end of the war. Yeah, when you go inside, you'll see all these old artifacts and the way it's decorated and some of the um, old machinery and things like that, typewriter. It was really kind of fascinating to walk around. Yeah, it's a living museum for sure. 
and, and the naval history fascinated us. People, the, the soldiers came up on the train, which is the train comes right through Glenwood Springs, and they stop there um, to heal from their wounds. war wounds. Yeah. yeah. So one of the easy hikes that we decided to do was going to the cemetery and gravesite of Doc Holliday. Yeah, it's a very easy hike, and the view from the cemetery looking back over Glenwood Springs is fantastic. Uh, easy hill to go up, and of course, anybody who's seen the story of Doc Holliday would be fascinated by going up and seeing where he's buried. However, we do understand that there's some... Controversy about whether he's actually there or not. Nobody knows for sure. This is an interesting cemetery uh, because as well as the fantastic view of Glenwood Springs, it's the burial place of Doc Holliday, who, who doesn't need any, any introduction, and also Kid Curry, who was one of the members of the Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids Hole in the Wall Gang. And if you've ever seen the movie, Butch Cassidy and Kid Curry have a famous knife fight. On the way up, uh, about halfway up, we ended up seeing this tree that was full of ribbons. It was um, quite startling to see it right there. And when we got back, we researched why that was there. And we found that the tree had been created by a woman by the name of Annie Zancanella while she was going through cancer treatments. But it's, it's really a interesting uh, edifice in the middle of the trail. Once you get to the top uh, where the cemetery is, it kind of flattens out, and it's a really pretty little old cemetery. It is. There, there aren't a lot of graves, but uh, so you can walk around easily and see what, what's there, and there are signs to direct you to places of interest. In the Kurt Russell Wyatt Earp movie, Kurt or Wyatt Earp brought Doc here to die. Uh huh. And then Wyatt Earp moved to California and met up with the actress that he met in Tombstone and fell in love with. They got married and lived together until the late twenties. Wyatt Earp wound up working for a movie studio as movies became popular and westerns were very popular in in that time frame. After Doc Holliday passed away. Yeah, Doc Holliday died in eighteen eighty one. Wyatt Earp lived for 40 more years into the 1920s. BD, six-gun handler. Who was? Wyatt Earp. And Wyatt Earp said about Doc Holliday, he was the most skillful gambler and the nerviest, speediest, deadliest man with a six-gun I ever knew. Really? Doc saved his life against the Clanton gang. The uh, other grave that we visited was Kid Curry, who was perhaps 100 yards up the hill from Doc Holliday's grave. And for those of you who have seen the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Kid Curry and Butch had a famous knife fight, which immortalized uh, Kid Curry in history. So one of the reasons to visit Glenwood Springs is because of the hot springs, of course. So we spent one afternoon at uh, Iron mountain hot springs because we like the fact that it had multiple pools yeah each of the pools was a different temperature so they had a little sign you just basically walked around and picked the temperature you wanted to plunge into and you jumped in and then uh, the setting right there next to the river was, was very pretty very pretty yeah in fact we saw some uh, tubers come by later on i don't think we caught in a video but it's a beautiful setting Springs. Simmering away our aches and pains in a beautiful hot tub, mineral spring fed 
environment. Okay. It's beautiful. One other reason to, to visit Glenwood Springs is that it's actually within close proximity to uh, the Aspen area and Snowmass. Yeah, I think the one-way distance was less than 50 miles and it was all beautiful highway. As you can see in this video segment here, the, the mountains, the snow-covered mountains in the background are just stunning. You can also day trip to the Colorado National Monument from Glenwood Springs. Now, we stopped here on our way to Moab, but you could easily do it within a day. Go out there and, and do the drive through the National Monument and back. Yeah, it's not very far. I think it was less than 40, 45 miles. We went on the road more, more than an hour. Uh, in, Glen, in Glenwood Junction. Grand Junction. Grand Junction. Yes. yes. Um, so we have another video on that that we're putting together, but this gives you an idea of what you'll see when you're there. It was really a great introduction to the rocks that we were going to see out in Utah. Yeah, beautiful setting. Canyons, mountains, the place is full of bicycle riders. It's just a beautiful sight. And that's all we have for Glenwood Springs today. It was a cool little town. It was. It was very enjoyable. We had a good time. We saw a lot of beautiful geography, uh, had some good food, and we really enjoyed ourselves. It's a great break on the way to Moab, Utah. And it was, uh, it actually probably exceeded our expectations. We didn't Quite really, a bit, yeah. Didn't really know what to expect before we went. And Never having been there, we didn't know what we're going to see, and we enjoyed it. And we would go back. Very definitely.